So my whole outlook, I guess, at this stage in my life is that all those experiences that I have as a musician working with other composers and artists is, is wonderful and I'll continue to do that, but it's how to use that experience in the projects and in the productions that I'm excited about with the people that um, inspire me and that I think need to have a voice through the platforms that I'm building. Orbiting 250 miles above, the space station provides us with the ultimate view of planet Earth. From this perspective, we ask our guests to engage with six questions that orbit around wonder and stories of hopefulness. For the next few minutes, this is our wonder space. Welcome to the 128th episode of the Wonder Space podcast and the first episode of 2024. My name is Steve Cole and over the past three and a half years I have asked the same six questions to amazing people from around the world. We started Wonder Space during the Covid lockdown to enlarge people's vision and perspective and remind everyone that alongside crisis and emergency are always mind-blowing wonders of the natural world and hopeful stories that fuel us and energise us, even in challenging times. Before I introduce our guest this week, I'm thrilled to confirm that Ask Nature, who are part of the Biomimicry Institute, have once again agreed to be part of Wonder Space this year. Here is another one minute wonder that will blow the fuses. The flute-like sounds of birds singing in a woodland may seem like simply background music, but research on animal communication has built up a startling picture of just how much information is actually being shared. Black-capped chickadees, for example, have a louder and longer version of their namesake call, which they use to draw other birds to mob a nearby predator. And the more dangerous the predator is to the chickadees, the more times they repeat the D sound coding more detail than many people may expect to find in bird calls. Chickadees also have a quiet, high-pitched seat call, which warns other birds and even mammals when a hawk or owl is flying nearby. The alert can spread through a forest from one chickadee to another faster than the predator can move. Scientists have even played a recording of the seat call all over the world outside the chickadee's range and other birds understood it and took cover. And for humans, technologies which tap into these patterns of communication could help make us better participants in the conversation, and thus better neighbors to our fellow species. This week on Wonder Space, we orbit with musician Eliza Marshall, a flautist working with some of the biggest names in global music. She has performed with orchestras, on film soundtracks, and on numerous albums, and also curates new music, documentaries, and artwork under her company, Freedom to Roam. Eliza, it's so great to have you on board a Wonder Space Orbit. From this expansive overview of Earth, if we could do a fly past over any part of the world that is significant to you, which place, city or country would it be and why? Well, I mean, you've caught me at a time, as you know, I've just come back from Senegal, so I'm going to be heavily influenced by that. <laughs> uh, I think prior to that trip, I probably would have said something like the Amazon, because how phenomenal would that be for great reasons and potentially tragic ones, I suppose. But I've come back from Senegal and the, the flight down there was phenomenal over the Sahara and I think I'd like to revisit that and I think I'd like to take everybody who's going to be on this flyby with me. Um, it's just such a vast expanse of nothingness and then um, wonderful patterns. Even from the flight you could see sort of these gentle sandstorms I suppose and then you'd get this pocket of a tiny little group of trees and, and you could even see sort of little tiny dwellings. And you think, how on earth does that happen? Um, and it, it also, I think it sort of opened my mind in a 
look at this world, look at this space, look what's available. Um, and I don't mean that in what can we take from the earth. I think I mean more what can we give back? What can we give back to a space that's almost empty, but there's life there? Love that. Amazing. So, Eliza, give us a glimpse into your life story so far with an emphasis on what you are doing currently. I'm a flute player primarily. That's my job. Um, I am at the Lion King in London in the Lyceum um, for my bread and butter, which is a, a very nice space to have. Um, but aside from that, I record and tour with lots of different artists, the likes of, I suppose, Peter Gabriel, Robbie Williams, Paul McCartney, that kind of person. That's equally enjoyable. I also play on lots of film soundtracks. So I did actually play on some of the um, David Attenborough series. I play on lots of Hollywood films. Again, that's very enjoyable. What do I love in my life that I do? I love collaborating with people. And I, I'm in a folk band called Ranagrai. Um, we're at Cropperty next year, so that's exciting. Um, but throughout COVID and up till now, so sort of coming to present of who, who is Eliza Marshall now as a, as a performer and as a curator, um, I formed a company, a, a community interests company called Freedom to Rome, where we curate, um, new music, new documentaries, new artwork, and it's all to do with focusing on lots of things that, I suppose, empowering positive solutions, focusing on lots of things that need to be done, but um, with a optimistic outlook, I guess, through music and through art. Um, and then just being in Senegal, I was very um, generously offered some grants that took me out there. I'm writing a new album and collaborating with musicians there. Um, so my whole sort of outlook I guess at this stage in my life is that all those experiences that I have as a musician working with other composers and artists is is wonderful and I'll continue to do that but it's how to use that experience in the projects and in the productions that I'm excited about with the people that um, inspire me and that I think need to have a voice through the platforms that I'm building. And is there somebody who's emerging in Senegal that's creatively you're really excited about at the moment as someone who you'd love to give a shout out to several different people in a way there's a the, the chap that I'm actually writing and recording with and it's actually a solo album so it's my album but he's called Adi Tiun um he's actually in his 50s he's this phenomenal percussionist um and he runs his dad actually um who's probably now in his early 80s ran the National Ballet um, of, of Senegal back in its day. And so watching what they're doing, particularly with various drummers, but also with dancers and particularly female dancers, because it's quite a male-dominated um, music scene still, it, that was really wonderful to see. Um, and being in the midst of 30 phenomenal drummers <laughs> is... Uh, is loud, all-encompassing, and then watching these women dance and playing these jun jun drums as well. Sort of shout out to everything they're doing under the umbrella of Adi Tiun. There's also a young singer called Wally Sek, um, and he's in his 30s, I think, and he's kind of coming up as the... not He's nothing like Yusu and Dor, but he's coming up as the as the very popular young artist. I mean, he has millions of followers, so he's he's huge there really now. And when do you imagine this project that you're creating is going to be released? Well, I'm going back again in February. And actually what's lovely and sort of something we've probably touched on in previous conversations is allowing fluidity within these sorts of projects. So it started out very much as a solo flute project that I was doing that happened really because of COVID and everything being closed, you know. Um, and now actually going and working with other musicians and seeing what they bring and seeing how the sounds change. Um, it's taking, it's like a river, I think. It flows and it changes and it turns and then who knows when it's going to get to the sea. So 
hopefully next year it'll be released, but I'm going to not rush it because I want to make sure it, it grows as it should. Amazing. So in the context of all these visions and projects, where on earth is your place of reset or recharge? Well, I don't know, Steve, if you've ever been to the Hebrides. No, I've never been to the Hebrides, but would love to go. OK, well, I've spent many, many months on the Hebrides and various different Hebridean islands. Um, when I was 16, I was on an island there for three months. No electricity, no access to the mainland other than via little boats. And as a 16 year old, that's a very, very special experience. Bearing in mind, without showing my age too much, I didn't have a mobile phone at that time. Social media wasn't a thing. Um, writing little diaries was a wonderful thing. Playing my flute that echoed in the caves around the other islands um, was amazing. And waking up every morning to otters, seals, deer, looking at the stars at night, absolutely incredible. And that obviously moved me aged 16 and now aged 43 I um that is my place of reset always I think anywhere up there Jura Mull Scarba even if you get out to the Outer Hebrides Harris and Lewis absolutely beautiful that's such a great runway into our next question Eliza what wonder of the natural world excites you the most well, this is a strange answer, and I suppose we have to answer questions like this that are relevant to where we're at in life. And the whole idea of this album that I'm writing is really to do with how we nurture one another and how nature nurtures. We talk about nature versus nurture, don't we, with regards to parenting, I suppose. And there's a book that my dad gave me a year ago called The Mother Tree by Suzanne Simard. And I haven't reread it recently, but it's all to do with how trees nurture one another and how they speak to one another via their roots and fungi. And, and I, I just thought, actually, that's become a big part of the inspiration behind my writing. Because isn't that, A, that is a phenomenon, and B, we don't see that. We don't need to see it to understand it. Um, but scientists and us therefore also know that that's going on underneath a surface. And I think that metaphorically resonated with me, that if this huge network is going on underneath the ground, I suppose I feel like that's what we can learn as humans as well, that we can implement into our lives of nurturing one another and looking out for one another. Um, I like that. That's my wonder at the moment. Love that. This understanding about mother trees and my causal networks, it, it's so recent. It's, it's like within the last 30 years that has just opened up this incredible insight and understanding that I guess we've never had before. Yeah. And when you step back from it, I suppose as an artist, not as a scientist, you know, I'm not going to understand everything that she understands, but I'm very moved by it. Um, and I, I just love that idea that, gosh, all these things are going on. That And right now, one of the most important things to all of us are trees. <laughs> That's exactly what we need to, A, know about, and B, be planting and being aware of. So it's it, not only is it a current thing, as you say, 15 years of actually just becoming something, a topic that's that's of interest, but actually it's so important, isn't it? Because these are, these are what we need to be... Um, thinking about a, a lot. Yeah, brilliant. So inspiring. So another question that we've asked so many people, and it's a really important question for us, is what's your story of hopefulness that's not your own about a person, business or non-profit who are doing amazing things for the world? So this is really easy to answer, and I've probably answered this in other e interviews, but I, I have to stick with this, and it sort of goes with the whole theme of this interview, I suppose. Um, and it's a man that I came across after reading George Monbiot's Feral, which I just thought was a fantastic book. Um, and this chap in the 80s... Um, decided even back then if you think of talking about things being current rewilding 
at mother trees, you know, that's all quite current, actually. But back in the 80s, that wasn't necessarily something that was being overly talked about, I don't think. Um, but he decided that the glens of Scotland needed to be rewilded. So he raised over a million pounds. This is just a normal human, an ordinary human, shall we say, an ordinary man. <laughs> and he he raised over a million pounds and he set up the charity Trees for Life. His name is Alan Watson Featherstone. We did go and do some filming with him, so we are connected with him. In fact, for a documentary called Connected, but that's not my story. It's his story and how he spoke and how he talked about the trees that he planted and that he showed us and that we looked at. Um, and there's this huge part now, Glen Affric, that has been totally, for want of a better word, rewilded. Um, and it was all to do with making fences, planting the right trees, keeping the deer out, very simple things that they've been doing that I know happens in, in loads of areas now, but it was quite radical at the time. And he lives a simple life. He lives up in Findhorn. He's got his little electric car in Findhorn. They're absolutely back to nature. They love their vegetables. They hug their trees, but to hear his insight and his love and his passion for something that he started and that he created from absolutely nothing. Um, I think that's a huge story of hope and a huge inspiration to anyone who has a dream to do something that might better the world. Amazing. Do you have any plans to get out there anytime soon? I mean, I think as soon as I possibly can, Steve. <laughs> it's, abs it's so stunning. It's so beautiful up there. Um, and it is actually really interesting. I'm a huge lover of, of Scotland, as as you can see, but and I've spent you know many times hiking up there. I've done the West Highland Way. I've done. I've obviously been to all the different islands. But you look you look at that scenery, which is very barren. You look at it and you think, oh, I I love that. I love the rocks. I love the fact that it's it's empty. And then suddenly, you talk to someone who says it shouldn't be like this. This should be these places should be covered in trees. And and initially you think, oh, hang on, but I like it empty. And then you change your mindset and you go, wow, imagine if this was covered in the forests that presumably it used to be. And and that that is a change of mindset. And it's a really important one to be able to go to some of these places and, and anyone who hasn't been m must go to like Glen Africa and have a look and go, wow, it's covered in trees. How wonderful is that? And that's, again, I suppose it's very thematic to everything I'm doing at the moment or that I love. And, and it's very important, isn't it? Yeah. Vital. Vital. Our final question, Eliza, is as we prepare to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere from this overview of Earth, what insight, wisdom or question would you like to leave with us? I suppose, again, these answers have to be relevant to who I am, don't they? And I'm a creative and I'm a musician. And having played with people like Peter Gabriel, I see what can be achieved through art. So I suppose, I don't know, this, this totally answers your question, but I think it does, which is that I'd like to say, dare to imagine and dare to believe that through whatever your medium is, we can all make changes, we can all implement changes, or we can all help one another with whatever our job is or whatever we believe in. And I like, I like that idea and I like what people like the Bob Geldofs and the, and the Peter Gabriels have done. And there are lots and lots of youngsters these days doing that. You've got loads of brilliant documentary filmmakers, incredible musicians. Um, they might be famous, they might not. That doesn't matter. Go and find them, look for them, forage, forage around and come together, be those roots. That connectivity in human life is one of the most beautiful things, I think, and, and we need to keep doing that and we need to look for that, especially outside of an online network let's find the outside network as well that's so good 
And to find out more information about what you're about and what you're doing, what you're about to do, where, where do we go online? You can very easily go to elizamarshall.com. But if you're interested in any kind of collaborative things, I would say go to freedomtoroam.earth. I want to thank Eliza for joining us on Wonder Space this week and for engaging with our six questions in such a brilliant way. I finish with a question to you. What is your story of hopefulness that's not your own? about a person, business or non-profit who are doing amazing things for the world. A story that makes a name for someone else. Thanks for listening.